Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're on location. We're in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN and NFE World Congress 2017. And I'm talking with Andrew Coward, who is the CEO of Lumina Networks, and Dominique Jodin, who is President and CEO of Noviflow. Gentlemen, welcome. Andrew, I've known for donkey's years. Only met you this morning, but you're very welcome indeed. Let's just get straight into this. Lumina Andrew is a brand new company. Tell us about that first and then we'll move into the meat of what we're going to talk about. Yes, so uh, 10 weeks into this, um, Lumina is a spin out from Brocade. Um, so we've actually been in the open source business of distributing open daylight for the last three years. So um, we have a kind of long track record that way, but obviously as a, as a, a new entity um, coming out of Brocade, then, then kind of new to the world that way. So a, th a three-year-old baby, let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, right. Now let's talk about what you're actually doing. You have a vendor-independent SDN controller and apps powered by Open Daylight, and you're in partnership with Noviflow, which we'll come to in a minute, to deliver a software-defined core using MPLS and segment routing based forwarding play. Sounds very impressive. What does it mean? Well, I think the uh, industry has been obviously adopting op um, open source software, you know, it's particularly in the service provider space over the last couple of years. And as a consequence, um, the service providers are kind of looking at uh, different parts of the network and how they bring SDN to those parts of the network. We've seen SD-WAN being a, you know, a lot of hype um, and, and activity around that. Um, but the core of the network, uh, which is MPLS based, hasn't really been touched by this technology. And this is an area of the network that's kind of been relatively unchanged for you know, 10, 15 years now. Uh, obviously the amount of traffic's gone up enormously through that time, but we haven't seen technology transformation there. So this is really, um, we believe, the kind of first time that disruption can be brought to that part of the, um, to the network. And it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, to do that historically because we didn't have all the pieces in place, and now we do. Thank you. Dominic, so tell us about the partnership. Why are you in it? What do you bring? We know what Andrew has just been saying. What do you bring to the partnership, and where do you expect it to go? Yeah, Noviflow, firstly, Noviflow is actually a company building network operating system, which is a software running inside some appliances. Uh, many people call this white boxes, so that's what we do for the last five years. And uh, we are a company focused on SDN and cybersecurity. But the particularity of what we bring to this equation is that we work with highly programmable chipsets underneath, if you like, uh, our software. So for example, network processors, or recently, as we announced at the show, the new Tofino chip from Barefoot Networks. So what we bring in collaboration with uh, Lumina Networks is the ability to effectively program the whole stack. That means if our customers need a new functionality, for example, always high-speed functionalities, in a matter of uh, two, three months, we can deploy the whole stack, including the forwarding plane. So basically, we enable Lumina to take advantage of programmatic forwarding plane. Who are your customers? Who are you, who are you selling to? And what benefits do they get from using this solution? Yeah, so the, the service providers um, who are building MPLS networks, who have, who have had these networks, uh, have kind of reached this point where um, they're trying to get the cost per bit down. So we, we kind of look at the, the customers in terms of, do you have a view that you want to bring open source into your network? Point number one, if, if that's the case, then okay, good, let's keep going with this conversation. Number two, um, are you trying to bring white box, white box technology into the network too? And where does that, where do you want that to play out? If those two things are, are yeses, then it's now a question of can our technology enable you to cap your investment in traditional legacy core routers and make this switch? And, and that means that there's, a, there's a, couple of, a couple of things that have to play out. First is that service providers are starting to adopt a technology called segment routing. And segment routing is a way of enabling these core networks to scale uh, beyond the limitations that we've seen in, in BGP. So that's the starting point. Um, the second part is that um, the, the, there needs to be this ability of, of the network to uh, want to be able to program the paths that go across it. So um, today, all these core networks, um, they treat all traffic exactly the same. It's a kind of gold class for everything. 
and that's really good for everyone, yeah. but it's very expensive for everyone. So we're basically saying the simple point is there's different classes of traffic that need to go across the network. So by all means, continue to use these legacy products for this gold class of traffic. But why are you doing that with your best effort traffic for your background, your shadow IT traffic? And so rather than say, this is a, a greenfield solution, just bring this in and replace, we're saying, let's start moving some of that traffic, low risk, onto this new infrastructure, onto this white box architecture, uh, onto this SDN architecture. And with that, um, you can basically reduce the cost per bit very radically for your best effort traffic. And when you feel confident, when you feel that you're ready, you can start moving the SLA guaranteed traffic onto this as well and lower, lower those cost bits. But let's be clear that the SDN enable, enables this kind of really vastly reducing the price of the, of the traffic as it goes across this network. So, gentlemen, it's a, an evolutionary process. This is part of an evolutionary process. Um, how big do you think the, the market is the potentially for this? Is it going to be applicable globally? Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a, it's a global uh, problem. These, uh, as Andrew mentioned, these MPLS networks are bursting to the seams uh, in all uh, carriers, uh, large and small, and it's uh, primarily due to the explosion of the video traffic. And another advantage moving forward of uh, this collaboration is that uh, once you have started to deploy this, uh, this cap and grow network, if you like, nothing preventing you from adding additional functionality to the existing infrastructure. So, and this is certainly the, some of the, these new plans that we have and we're developing together with the Lumina Networks. One of the things we've been talking about over the course of the show here is the fact that it's five years since the first NFV white paper was published and there's been a sort of a, li a little bit of a dip in the popularity of NFV because there was that massive hype of expectation at the start and then a little bit of a trough of despond thereafter, yeah. and, thereafter. and people are saying, well, it's, it hasn't happened as quickly and as effectively as we thought it would. And we're into this, as I say, this, this five-year bit. But you know and I know that the average time for innovation in the telecommunications network is 10 years, sometimes 15 years before we do it. So we're about halfway along the road. You're taking this evolutionary approach. How do you think that's going to pan out as SDN and NFE become more and more prevalent within the transform network? And as we get AI, machine learning, more cloudification and automation all bolted onto it. Yeah, there was one major flaw in the, in the premises of SDN, if you like, and NFV, is that to have a real programmatic uh, a network, you need to have a programmatic forwarding plane. Now you recall that uh, five years ago, it was ASIC that was dominating, and you can't program ASIC, so you have a, th this has now been lifted, that requirement, by companies like uh, Barefoot Networks coming up with a high performance programmable infrastructure at the same cost point as the best ASIC today. That is a major change happening. The second one is simply that the people got to get used to new technologies. There's humans that have to learn new tricks, so to speak. Yeah, true enough. Yeah. And so, so many of the, the SDN and NFE projects are kind of stuck in the lab, um, yeah. and they've been stuck for a little while now, to Indeed. a kind of five-year point. Yeah. So for most of our customers, it's a question of how do we actually get them out of the lab and into the live network? And so our job really, as we see it as Lumina, is to help bring those projects out of the lab, help them identify what they can actually touch today, what's relatively low risk for them to go take and prove, and, uh, and, and actually learn through that process so that the infrastructure is then built, so that it's ready for whether it's AI, machine learning, whether it's um, network slicing, which is where it's an important attribute they're going to need in the MPLS core and why is going to play in the mobile space for that. So all of these things are preparation but it doesn't work if you don't actually use it in the real world. Indeed. Uh, and and that that's, right. has to be the, the call to action, really, to, to everyone out there who's, who's got these projects in the lab, is get them out, go pick something. Yes. Um, and, yeah. and what we're really saying um, in this partnership between Lumina and Novaflow is here is an example of something that's practical, that's been deployed in live customers, in real world, and can be executed right now. What has the reception been like in the industry? It's all very new, the company's all very new. How's it going? And you've, you've just announced this. What's the reaction been? Dominic and I have been talking to a few of the analysts this week, and it's been interesting to gauge their reaction. Because in, in the first instance, they kind of all, you have the temerity to, to challenge <laughs> the core event. How would you possibly do that? And as you go through the explanation of why this is the right time, 
that why segment routing is now becoming really important, why the SDN elements are critical if they're going to adopt network slicing in 5G. All of these different elements start to play out and, until you get to this, well, I guess it really is the time to disrupt, and, and if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now. Um, so that reaction's been, been fascinating to, to watch as people just, the, 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 the penny drops. It's been tremendous, tremendous. And uh, we, we have, uh, in our case, uh, no, NoviFlow has been around for five years now, and uh, our sales are uh, starting to explode, if you like, and we're very fortunate to be in that position because now all the elements are in place. The white box revolution people have been talking about, well, to do that, you need actually a network operating system to take advantage of the, the power of these programmable chip. Now we provide that at NoviFlow, so that's available. Lumina comes up with uh, these, uh, their part of the equation, and I think we start to see now, finally, uh, a really gradual and rapid increase of the uh, deployment of SDN and NFV. So what about the actual size of the market, the potential for you? Where is it? How big is it? And do you not have any idea what it's worth? Yeah, so um, the analysts say the market for core, NPS core routers is about $3.2 billion. So obviously not as large as some of the other markets, but still very significant. And so our, our job really is to intercept that, um, paradoxically make that market look much smaller <laughs> because of the cost points that, that are going to get driven in this. Um, but I should say also, this isn't about the price per bit that's really driving this. If that's the only criteria, they can go beat up vendors and get the prices down. This is about transformation of a network and the need to make that transformation. As such, this is part of a much bigger market um, that is everything to do with networking. Um, SDN in its entirety is more like 30 or 40 billion dollars or predicted to be very soon. So that's the market that we're now playing. Dominic, you've mentioned cap and grow um, a couple of times. What does it mean and what kind of new services can you bring forward through that? Yes, as we mentioned before, some of these MPLS network are bursting to the seams. They're really, really full of traffic and you don't want necessarily to touch it. So uh, thanks to Lumina and NoviFlow, uh, our customers are able to offload some of the traffic and one of them that is actually becoming extremely important is uh, telemetry. So we can call this as streaming telemetry. That we think is an enormous area of growth uh, moving forward. And we have just the right solution together with Lumina and NoviFlow to address this need. Final question to you to round things off. Um, this is the first announcement. As you say, five years and 10 weeks. Um, uh, what is next? Do you have plans for further development, for new solutions, new products? Where are you going to go with it? Yeah, so um, we've seen our business really follow the asks and requests of the service providers themselves. And so we started out really in helping the service providers get their legacy networks migrated into SDN. So enabling technology, this new technology on old platforms. Now that the white box movement is finally making its way into service providers and kind of escaping the data center and the hyperscale guys, then the opportunities for uh, white box will start permeating across the rest of the service provider networks as these technologies kind of play out. And that's really exciting. We started in the core in this case yeah. Um, the edge is next, um, mobile follows, uh, and being able to deliver these things end to end and disrupt the rest of the market um, is going to be really exciting. And it's a continuum. If you would look at the, the roadmap of both companies, you'll see that there's a number of new features that are going to be added over the next months as a result of our customers, the carriers, using this new way of working, if you like, and finding out new requirements and new possibilities for them. So that is actually a continuum. Gentlemen, Dominic Jordan and Andrew Coward, thank you both very much indeed. Interesting stuff. Thank, thank you. you very much.